This is a short screencast uh, demonstrating legal styles for Zotero. Um, features that you might want to watch out for as we cut through the examples are first the one-click acquisition of references, related library items, a standard Zotero feature, parallel citations as used in legal writing, the automatic abbreviation of field content using external abbreviation lists and a plugin that works with Zotero, and citation style selection uh, in the rather complex styles used for law. Let's get started. Um, in this demo, we're going to use a library, um, which I've pre-populated with three references to the same case. We'll use these for parallel references. Um, note that uh, in these references, they are cross-linked so that um, in a larger library where it may become difficult to track where things are located, the items relating to the same case are interlinked in this way. Um, these three items are not going to be sufficient for the demonstration, so we're going to acquire uh, some more. This is a case from the Bailey site, an English case, so that we can demonstrate citation in more than one jurisdiction. One click here acquires the site content, uh, and we can see that in the library we now have a neatly cross-linked set of references to this case as well. Uh, in addition to these two primary source uh, sites, we'd like to have a uh, secondary source. Uh, I prepackaged a search here. Copyright as an engine of innovation, which we will now search for. Um, and when that comes up, we'll take a look, and there's something that looks useful. So I'll we'll take a listing here and pick out that site. Copyright for Functional Expression by Professor O'Weiner. Okay, so we'll acquire that reference, and we can see it coming in over here. And if we check back in the library, we can see that we have the secondary reference here, and we have the Feist case and British Leyland. So we should be ready to build a document now. Let's have a look. Um, I've got some boilerplate text here. As far as I know, doesn't doesn't mean much. This is just uh, Laura Mipson in different script. Now um, we're going to cite some references into the document, but our first step is to select a citation style, and we'll start with Oscola, which is the Oxford Standard for Citation of Legal Authorities used in England. And we'll select that style. We choose our point of entry, and we click on our insert button, and here we go. Uh, we'll start with an English case, as we're in an English style, and we'll do more than one site for this. We'll do this in parallel with uh, first this appeals case site that we just put in, and then we'll try the All England for our second site. And if we click to insert, we see that we get the citation in the document there, uh, formatted as appropriate for the Oscola style. Alright, so we've got that in. Um, and in addition, we might want to add a little further down that secondary reference that we were looking at. So we'll put that in. Where is that? There we are. Copyright for functional expression can go in here. And now we have two sites, um, both of them cited according to both of them cited according to Oscola rules. And let's put in, in between here a site to those two English cases that we just referred to. And we'll do both of them so that we can see that work. And let's give it some pinpoints here. I don't really remember the page numbers of these, so we'll just put in some boilerplate. First case, and then for the second reference, four, five, six. Try that out. Okay. So here we see we have um, Ibid uh, one two three and the um, nineteen eighty 
456, one all the R, 850 at 456. The page numbers, of course, don't make any sense, but uh, that's sufficient for the demo. Um, and now let's get that US case slided in here. So we'll put that in here. Uh, our US citation is here, and we'll start with US reports, and again, we'll do this in parallel. According to Escola, and we might want to take a look at back referencing. So we'll tie in, in addition to IBID, we can do sites of slightly greater distance. So we'll take a look here, and this was appeals cases, wasn't it? And again, multiple sources, and a bunch in the old England, and see what we get. Now, this is a correct back reference site, more or less. Um, I'm not actually sure whether Escola would use the second site here. But the title is a bit longish. Yes, we want to use a here and after. So we're going to make use here of a feature of the abbreviations plugin. And do a here and after on the late British Leyland case. And we'll call it British. carry through the document um, as it goes. Um, now, one thing to note here before we switch, we'll try a style switch now, but one thing to note is that we have here and here um, the ORS word, which is others in English citation styles. Um, when we convert this to document to Blue Book, Others, the blue book calls for those to be to be eliminated, and so they're dropped from the case name here, as you can see. Um, this is the document in blue book format, and again, if we wanted to give this a short name, we can do that using the here and after function. Um, British Leyland would want to be something like. Also, that um, the abbreviations that are used in the document are automatically applied. The FICE Publications Inc. v. Rural Telephone Service Company was spelled out in full in the database and was not actually known to the software, uh, but the word abbreviation lists that are registered in the plugin give us the correct blue book, um, or at least propose a correct blue book. If we don't like that abbreviation, of course, we can edit it. And so we can go in here and do, let's see, that was the title, wasn't it, of the case. Um, this could be altered if we don't like that. If we like service spelled out, we can do that. Okay, good. And then these, um, <clears throat> these alterations, uh, edits, are saved into the database and will then take effect on this article, throughout this article, or on any other articles that I might write. Okay, well that's pretty much the feature set. Um, let's see, so let's step back and have a look at what we've got here. For this demo, um, we use the multilingual Zotero uh, variant of the Zotero Reference Manager, uh, nickname LLZ, and a very new plugin that's called the abbreviations for Zotero that I've prepared for the demo. Um, and we'll nickname that A4Z because we have a back reference coming up here. For citation styles, we use the MLZ extended CSL schema, which is part of the citation stylist project, uh, of which I'm the chief member. And uh, some extended features.
features that are embedded in the CSL processor that runs in Zotero, that's SitePROC.js, and also written by yours truly. And we also use um, abbreviation lists. Now, to make the, give users the convenience of automatic abbreviation of content, the proposed abbreviations that we saw in the demo, um, we use pre-registered abbreviation lists. And in the client currently, I'm running with uh, abbreviations that were scanned from pages 430 to 472 of Blue Book 19th edition, and some supplemental data that are en entered via the UI um, to adjust things and make them, make them appropriate. So anyway, that's it for the demo. Um, I'll look forward to your comments.